Okay, uh, let's get started. So, good evening, everybody. You know, thanks for uh, coming, and you know, thanks to organizers for inviting me to uh, speak at this uh, venue. Um, what I will talk about is some of our work uh, that we are doing uh, between MIT and the research center that MIT has opened in Singapore called SMART on autonomous vehicle technology, uh, but also, but not only on the technology itself, but also on the potential impact in terms of how this new technology can change the, um, the way that we perceive and we think of personal mobility, especially within urban environments. Go to the next slide. Uh, the very first thing that I would like that, that I would like to make sure of is that um, everybody in this room realizes that uh, self-driving cars are not science fiction. Uh, they're coming. Uh, you may have seen uh, in the news the Google's driverless car. You may have heard from the news that Uber has just um, 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 acquired uh, essentially some research capability in the area based at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, but an important point that I would like to make uh, is that also you don't need to be a $300 billion giant uh, to make one. Uh, in this video, uh, I'm showing, in the next slide, uh, in this video I'm showing the, um, you know, some of the vehicles that we have built uh, at our research center in Singapore. This is just work that a couple of faculty members and a dozen students uh, could do over uh, uh, two, three years. Uh, and as you can see, we have developed a number of very capable autonomous vehicles. We can drive on public roads, on campus, in pedestrian areas. Uh, safely uh, detecting other vehicles, detecting obstacles, detecting pedestrians. Uh, and actually we can do that at a cost that is uh, much lower uh, than some of the um, uh, other vehicles that are currently uh, covered in the news. Uh, but let's go to the next slide. Um, so this should be the slide on why automated vehicles, right? So uh, why are we going to all this travel? Uh, and you know, if you can just hit uh, you know the uh, uh, the button a few times until the the whole slide shows shows up. So typically, uh, the the arguments that people make for autonomous vehicles are primarily safety. Uh, most of road accidents are due to human errors. So you remove the humans, you remove the errors, hopefully. Second is convenience. Uh, if the car is driving for you, then you know you can relax and sleep or read a book when when computing to work. Third is access. So uh, there was this famous video of the Google car allowing a legally blind person to drive around, you know, and live his life uh, fully. Fourth one is efficiency in terms of congestion reduction. So we have a number of cars that can coordinate among themselves. So hopefully you can increase the throughput and reduce congestion in cities. Uh, fifth point is environmental impact. Uh, so an autonomous car can drive using, uh, for example, speed profiles that are much more uh, um, environmentally friendly in a sense and you know, reduce consumption, reduce emissions. But what we are interested in, these are all great things, uh, but what we are interested in is really looking at what you can think of as Automobile 2.0. Uh, that is, are there any new applications, new way of thinking about cars that are enabled by this technology? And this is what we are actually most interested in. How do you compare all this? This is a slide on financial perspective. Um, so how do you compare all these different benefits? Uh, a good way of doing that is bring everything you know down to a, like a, some financial estimate and compare the financial benefits uh, uh, of each one of the uh, aspects. What is safety worth? Now, what is the cost of your life? Well, to yourself, uh, to your loved ones, to your friends, will be priceless. Uh, to the government, it's about nine million dollars. Uh, so, if you actually multiply the cost of uh, the statistical life times the, uh, you know, the number of accidents, what you get is the economic cost of traffic accidents, which is about $300 billion a year in the U.S. The pain and suffering, societal harm of traffic accidents is about $600 billion per year. Uh, that's about 900, uh, you know, a total of $900 billion uh, per year in the United States. Uh, just click the button. Uh, the next component is 
uh, the cost of congestion that has been estimated to be about $100 billion a year. The health cost of congestion, about $50 billion a year. But now is the big thing. So what is the value of the time that you get back from not having to drive to work? That is, you know, uh, essentially doing something that is either productive or pleasant uh, while driving, instead of driving. Uh, the value of that we estimate to be about $1.2 billion a year. The next big thing is actually car sharing. So if you think of it, your car, on which you invest uh, a big chunk of your disposable income, actually sits in the parking lot 95% of the time. Uh, and most often, this parking lot is very expensive. So you actually pay for the privilege of not using the car that you paid for. So if you think of it that way, uh, really the current model of car ownership is not really scalable and is not sustainable. Uh, but a car that, that can drive itself, there is no point in, uh, in keeping it uh, you know, in, the, in the parking lot. So a car that can drive itself can go pick up somebody else after he has you know, dropped you off at work. And uh, so that's the idea of car sharing. I think that uh, the killer app for autonomous cars is uh, enabling car sharing. Assuming a sharing factor of four, that is essentially four people, four families will be able to share one car. We estimate the benefit to the individuals of about $1.8 trillion a year in the US. Uh, and actually this sharing factor estimate is rather conservative with respect to uh, other estimates in the literature. So what you see here is uh, the market of about $3 million uh, a year in the US alone. So it's a huge market opportunity. Uh, this is a video uh, about our concept. So this is uh, actually the project leader uh, of my team. Uh, essentially, we have a, uh, a smartphone app that you can use to summon a vehicle. Uh, I don't know if it's showing. Uh, oh, this, uh, this is fine, actually. It's actually a demo that we did recently in the public gardens in Singapore. So we had a fleet of these little autonomous golf carts that we actually provide mobility demand service in a, in a public market city. So this was a demo that we did in October. Uh, it was very successful, uh, uh, no incidents. But we were very happy. We drove around 500 people, uh, you know, just normal people in Singapore. You can see families, uh, grandmas with uh, which children. Uh, and everybody was very happy that we actually asked right. for the to pay the very much Yeah, also because it's our very No, you don't think so, right? This is and next slide. Uh, it's actually a great opportunity to reinvent the automobile, right? So now we have this uh, new technology like autonomy that really has incredible synergies with car sharing. As I was saying before, uh, a car, you know, it's pointless to keep a car that can drive itself park in the driveway. You can just let the car drive somebody else uh, to work or shopping or to some restaurant or wherever they want to be. At the same time, if you are sharing the vehicle, the cost of the autonomy of the extra technology can be shared by uh, several people. So it, it actually becomes affordable. Same thing with electric vehicles. Now, the, an obstacle to the, um, you know, to the uh, adoption of electric vehicle is the cost of the battery. But if you're sharing the vehicle with several other people, the capital expense is no longer an issue. Uh, also, a uh, limit is the range anxiety. But what if the car was able to go recharge itself and come and pick you up always with the full charge? I think that you know these are all technologies that can you know uh, synergize with one another and really uh, allow uh, a new concept of, of car that is actually much more sustainable uh, uh, for our communities. Uh, we actually did in the next slide with this study in uh, in Singapore. So what we show here is we made this thought experiment. What if someday there are no more private vehicles in Singapore, there are no more trains, no more buses? The only thing that you can use for transportation is one of these shared cars. What I'm showing in this movie is, a, uh, is, is actually a, an animation showing uh, what the fleet of all these cars will, will move around during the day. In the top left corner, what you see is the time of day. When you see blue is a person uh, either driving in a car or waiting in line for a car to pick up. When you see red is actually empty cars, uh, either waiting at stations or 
uh, moving empty to cup and then discuss. Okay, and what you can see is that actually most of the time, uh, as soon as you request a vehicle, you will get one within two or three minutes. Uh, the rush hour, you will actually have, uh, you know, in many locations, you will have actually have to uh, queue up to get access to a vehicle, but the waiting times uh, are within uh, 15, 20 minutes. That is comparable to waiting time for a taxi at those times of day. Uh, and essentially what we are saying, what we are seeing from this model is that a fleet of approximately 300,000 share cars can satisfy the mobility demand of the entire population of Singapore with waiting times of about 15-20 minutes at peak hours. Uh, thinking of the fact that time when we did this analysis and where 800,000 passenger vehicles in Singapore, what this means is that we have a 60% cut the number of cars uh, in a city, okay? Uh, which means is that you know, if you have fewer vehicles, uh, you will need fewer parking spots. Uh, a lot of space can give, be given back to people, uh, you know, to enjoy or for parks or for residential facilities or entertainment facilities instead of devoting a large chunk of our cities uh, just to uh, you know, park cars. Okay, so I think that there are huge benefits from this model. Uh, what are some next slide? What are some possible paths forward? Uh, we need to see two main drivers for complexity in developing uh, autonomous vehicles. One is the complexity of the environment. Okay, so how much trash you have. Uh, it's clearly easier to have autonomous vehicles that can move in a highly structured, segregated environment, for example, like a factory floor or something like that. Whereas it's more difficult to have autonomous vehicles that drive in a complex uh, shared environment like a downtown Athens or Rome or any other big city. Another driver for complexity is uh, the risk involved with uh, collisions or you know, if anything goes bad. And you can use as a proxy for that, the speed of the vehicle. So it's easier to drive in, uh, or it's safer to drive in urban, low speed kind of environment than in highway, high speed applications. But then you can think of this ISO complexity curves, right? So if you want to do, if you want to, uh, to do everything that a human driver could do, then you will be sitting at the top right corner, okay? So that's something that is very difficult. Conceivably, this is what Google is trying to do. Uh, it will take a long time. I don't know exactly what is the path to there. On the other hand, in the top, bot, uh, sorry, in the bottom left corner, what you have is a personal rapid transit in control space. You already have that. For example, if you go to Heathrow, they have this system called Ultra that autonomously ships, uh, shuttles passengers between terminals. The interesting thing is that actually you can find um, a number of niches uh, along these curves that are actually not far away in the future, but also can provide you uh, can provide society with a huge uh, 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 added value. For example, you can think of automated highways in which only automated vehicles are allowed to get on. Uh, now you have a relatively simple environment where everybody is connected to all the other cars. There are no children crossing the street. There are no level crossings. And this is actually something that can be done in very short order. Conversely, you can concentrate on even very complicated uh, environments like uh, downtown uh, metropolitan areas, but then you're moving at low speed. And I think that there are many applications that uh, can be developed uh, in this kind of uh, this kind of setting, and in particular, I, uh, I, I'm thinking of this autonomy for these mobility on demand applications that I was showing you before. Uh, so I really think that before we get to the uh, upright corner, which is substituting for human driver, and this will be something we have to do, there is actually um, a number of low hanging fruits that actually reach and can provide a huge societal benefit as a relatively low technological challenge. So to conclude, uh, driverless cars are no longer science fiction. Uh, we, I think this structured technology can really lead to new models of personal mobility, uh, for example, based on car sharing. An important point is that we have to remember that 
ball is not only in the court of the big players. So you don't need to be Google, you don't need to be Uber, you don't need to be Apple or any Amazon or any like a big company uh, to develop uh, uh, autonomous vehicles. Actually, if you think of it, uh, the, the team that developed the Google's driverless car was actually a team based at Stanford and CMU who did work on the Dark Urban Challenge. Same thing for Uber's new effort. You know, that's, you know, that's actually acquired a team from a CMU. Uh, so I think that there is really a big role to be played by university academic teams, uh, small teams of motivated and creative and talented engineers. So don't be scared away by big, uh, uh, big players in the, in the space. And I think that, you know, this is, for me is a very attractive technology because, you know, in a sense, for the first time in my career, I work a lot on UAVs, on drones, on military technology, but I see a potential for a very profound impact on, on our lives and also on our cities and the environment. Okay, so uh, thank you for your attention. This is what I wanted to share, and I'll be happy to take any questions if you have any.